RG3 is one of my favorite college football players of all time. Simply electrifying, Baylor was must-watch football in his final year. And you always love it when a superstar is on kind of a... I don't want to say, you know, a small school because Baylor's, you know, pretty legit. But you know what I'm saying. They're not a powerhouse, but good players elevating some of these outside teams to compete with some of the big dogs. That's exactly what you got with RG3 and that explosive Baylor offense. Went to the NFL, got drafted. We got the Commanders mod on right now. So to get in rhythm for Madden 23, we're going to refer to them as the Commanders, even though at this point in time, they were very much the Redskins. But the Washington Commanders drafted RG3. He started absolutely phenomenally as a rookie and then they completely botched it. They dropped the ball. The development wasn't there. The biggest issue maybe was the injuries. The handling of his injuries, not giving him proper rest, rushing him back to the starting lineup. The desperation might have ruined the career of RG3. Now, as a Philadelphia Eagle fan, the idea of RG3 being very good is kind of terrifying because he'd probably still be in the league today. And I'm not saying they'd have a couple Super Bowls, but RG3 was definitely on a trajectory to be a perennial MVP candidate with his electrifying playmaking ability and his Kane and Evan arm. So what we're going to do here today is we were starting here live in the Madden 13 season. Rookies here for RG3. We also have the rookie here for Kirk Cousins. Maybe we'll get a little bit of trade bait um, come the draft or something like that. Maybe we can move him on. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to have that looming. But what if, like, the perfect scenario is kind of lined up here for Washington? Instead of old man Mike Shanahan that completely ruined RG3, what if he's like, you know what, I'm going to step down. My son is ready to be my successor, Kyle Shanahanian, up there. And we're going to rock and roll with him. I mean, you could even go McVay. Sean McVay was on that roster as well. But I just think because of the Shanahan family name, I could see him stepping down and promoting his son. So that is what we're going to do with, for the base ratings, we have the Madden 13 ratings for the Commanders here. As you can see, offensively, um... Man, Royal Lou was a beast in Madden. I never, I always knew he was kind of solid, but like at 5'10", 200 pounds, built like a little bit like a power back, coming up with 93 speed, 96 acceleration. When I saw that, I was like, okay, might be something there. We got Pierre Garçon as our top wide receiver. Uh, Fred Davis, Chris Cooley on the offensive line, led by superstar Trent Williams. Absolute monster, but still plenty of work that needs to be done to build around this offense for RG3. We got Alfred Morris in his rookie season, but obviously he has a way to go in terms of his growth and development. So definitely helping out RG3 on offense is going to be a top priority for this rebuild. Defensively, pretty good. we got Ryan Kerrigan, Brian Arakpo, London Fletcher, the great London Fletcher. He's 37. This is most likely going to be his final year, but what a beast he was. One of the most underrated linebackers of all time. we got D'Angelo Hall in the secondary, but there's still plenty that needs to be rebuilt here on the defensive side of the ball. But it is good that we have this man under center because he's going to be able to take this team to heights that we can never once think of achieving and all we have to do is just draft pretty well and fill in the spots around him. And I think we are going to be able to achieve a Super Bowl over... We're going to go to current day. So that is nine seasons, nine years. We're going to at least get one Super Bowl. We're going to get a couple MVPs with RG3. And today's video is what if RG3. I don't even know what we can call this. This might even just be like a career rebuild video. The career rebuild of RG3 slash what if... The Commanders, Washington, did not ruin this dude's career. So year one for RG3 and Washington. We won the NFC East, went 11-6. We did make the playoffs, but unfortunately, the moment was too big. And in the opening round, we lost to the Legion of Boom Seattle Seahawks. 31-28 uh, in this matchup. Russell Wilson was clean. RG3 was prolific, but not clean. 360-3 is phenomenal. Two interceptions is showing... You know, lot to learn, rookie hiccups, whatever you want to call it. But I think RG3, I'm not going to say he's going to be MVP. I, I would, I'd be shocked if he's not in the MVP finals. I've seen a couple uh, weekly awards where he had massive games. Look at that. Receiving leaders, Pierre. Okay, first of all, passing. You got Jamarcus Russell just crushing it. But if you go to receiving leaders, Pierre Garçon had 16, almost 1,700 yards, only seven touchdowns. Uh, I think Josh Wilson's actually on our team, five picks. Uh, leading, or at least tied for first in interceptions. But looking at RG3, okay, maybe not too hot. 4,600 yards, 30 touchdowns. Four. We are using Shanahan everything, so he might have some decent scrambling numbers. They're, they're you know, on middle of the park. But uh, as, as far as a passing offense, you know, it's not a bad start. RG3, 4-6 and six as a rusher. I'll take that. 15 touchdowns for the rookie Alfred Morris. Just vulturing. We got 1,000 yards. Roy Hill Lube. Massive year for Pierre Garçon. Over 1,000 yards for Fred Davis. Uh, we got 900 yards there. Josh Morgan on the defensive side. Perry Riley led the team with 123 tackles. 100 for the veteran London Fletcher. 18 and a half sacks on 16 TFLs. 
for Arakpo. Definitely want to see a little bit more production out of Ryan Kerrigan, however. And Josh Wilson with his five picks, tied for first in the league. So we had some pretty good performance here in year one for Washington. MVP went to Matt Ryan, RG3 as a rookie, top five in the MVP voting race. So that is actually really, really good, all things considered. He's number five in the Offensive Player of the Year vote. Uh, for individual awards, RG3 is the Offensive Rookie of the Year, beating out Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. On the rest of the awards, I don't think we'll probably have too much. No, runner up there, Josh Wilson. But either way, outstanding start for RG3, and I definitely think we got something here. So with free agent being so bad and we needed to make big jumps, you got to rip the bandit off with Kirk Cousins. He's a 74 star dev going into his second year. He's better than probably any quarterback that any team would get beyond like the top 10 pick. So we're able, literally, I just <laughs> went through all the teams that had a great interest in Kirk Cousins. And I, uh, you know, I tried getting pick 7, pick 10, pick 14. No one was biting, but we were able to get pick 20 from the Houston Texans, sending them Kirk Cousins and our second and fourth round picks this year to get pick 20. So we now have two top 20 picks. Let's make sure we can get some hits here. Looking for wide receivers. We're looking for offensive linemen. We're looking for linebackers. We're looking for DBs. Any and all, welcome to Washington. So first off, at pick 20, we need that premier wide receiver. We have DeAndre Hopkins, a man who uh, probably one of my favorite Washington clips of all time is DeAndre Hopkins for the Texans going up against D'Angelo Hall during practice in the, you know, just training camp. If you haven't seen it, it's one of the greatest videos I've ever seen. Now they get to do it every single day in practice. So after the DeAndre Hopkins pick, look at where we need. Travis Frederick's on the board, but I don't really need a center right now, even though he's best player available. Could use guard. Um, defensively, outside linebacker. Could use really either safety, free or strong. And, you know, could get younger at D-tackle and corner. I know Darius Slay still on the board. I don't know if I want to go back-to-back. -back. Super cheesy pick here. Uh, but the big upgrades. What do we got at outside linebacker? Boston. I mean, there's no real first-rounders here. You got Alec Ogletree. Manti Teo. I'm sure Manti Teo does have a dev trait. But you know what? To keep things simple, let's uh, let's get Ogletree. Should pull a dev. Oh, wow. That's not a good pick. So looking at our draft recap, I will say silver lining. Okay, we got DeAndre Hopkins. It's a mega pick. Uh, silver lining is if you've got a normal dev rookie, you want them to either be a linebacker or a safety because those are the two players that tend to go up dev trade fairly easy so 69 and if we can get him up dev trade after one year 69 star dev will probably be 73 74 next season as a 22 star dev linebacker that's gonna be pretty well uh for his development so we just need to I hope he gets his dev happy we got deandre hopkins uh we got banks a catapano and marcus cooper to kind of finish out the draft here but it would have been nice to get two players that uh, had dev trade throughout the gate. Hopefully, Andre Hopkins pulls superstar, maybe even an X factor to kind of lessen the blow there a little bit, and we get that dev for Al Golgotry here in his rookie season. Kind of cool side story here, not related to RG. Think about Perry Riley, our starting middle linebacker, has gone up to a superstar dev. Pretty cool. Year two, uh, a little bit backwards for some reason. Seven and ten, and our passing numbers fell off a cliff. Um, don't know why. I mean, still not a bad year. I mean, our numbers were bad, but RG3, as a team, it was bad. But RG3, that's not bad. 4,000 yards, 32 touchdowns, under 10 picks. We got, you know, had the same amount of rushing yards. None of the rushing touchdowns, unfortunately. Uh, still a decent one-two punch there. Halu and Alfred Morris. 1,000 yards, Fred, Je uh, Fred Davis. 1,000 yards, Pierre Garcia. DeAndre Hopkins, 9-7, and seven, and he did pop with the X Factor. So that kind of makes up for... Uh, you know, Ogletree and not getting a dev trade on both of those first round picks. Because we really need to hit. Come on, we traded Kirk Cousins. That was a pretty big trade. Uh, Perry Rather, who went up superstar, had a huge year. 136 tackles there. We had 15 sacks at Rackbow, 10 from Ryan Kerrigan. Four picks. Josh Wilson leading the team very quickly. Looking at the award winners, Arian Foster is the MVP. And unfortunately, no one outside of Graham Gano, who got kicker of the year. Just, just a weird year, hopefully an anomaly. Let's go back in, come back for the Madden 15 season, and get back into the playoffs. With the 12th pick, quick look at our squad, where we need to get better. So if there is, say, a center, right guard, right tackle, offensive tackle, that's clearly the best player available. We might have to just pull the trigger. We won't go cheesy position because we want DeAndre Hopkins in year one. We could also say the same for D tackle. 
strong safety, free safety, third corner. I mean, at least we got plenty of options here. Kyle Fuller just went off the board to pick 11. He would have been a likely, a, you know, a top candidate there. So let's see what we have available. So starting on the offensive line, you have Jake Matthews, Taylor Luan at tackle. Not too bad. Not much there on the interior outside of Zach Martin, which would be a, a very good pick going forward. D tackle, we have not much. Corner, Bradley Roby. Eh, safety, Calvin Pryor. And Ordeal, I think, honestly, we're going to have to go with, uh, the, I think, Zach Martin. Zach Martin might not be the sexiest upgrade, might not be the best use of the 12th pick getting a guard, but when you get a guy that's most likely going to be a goldie boy, in terms of dev trait, got to roll with it. So for our draft recap, first round, I just said we got Zach Martin. Second round, I, I got a guy that's been a pretty good tackle for Washington. I thought there might have been a chance at a dev. We've got Morgan Moses. He is uh, 66. Will Sutton, Corey Lindsay. I uh, knew that, you know. Didn't have a dev, but should have a dev. Underrated. Criminally underrated. I rest of the draft wasn't too shabby. Needed a safety. Got to try to find maybe one veteran that's still on the open market to come in and start for us. But hey, Zach Barton, you can do a lot worse in the first round. Year three for RG3. Uh, we go 11 and 6. We win our second NFC East title in three years of this rebuild. So that's a great start within our own division. Playoffs was... Um, Better. First round, we beat Dallas 37-13. Second round, we beat the Niners 24-17. And then the championship game, the Bears, I don't want to say that they're a 79 overall team. They were a 79 overall team. We're 85, and they absolutely cook us. Um, But, you know, two, two playoff victories, that's definitely, like, something to build off of. It's a good starting point. Um, 4,300 yards, 35 touchdowns, 37 touchdowns to five picks for RG3. is outstanding. 9-4, and four, Roy Hill Lou. He's actually said to be a free agent. I'm making the call. I think we're going to go Alfred Morris. Let him be our RB1. Don't really need two running backs in a Madden sim, or at least two high-paid running backs. So, uh, you know, as much as Roy Hill Lou is interesting, yeah, he's no Alfred Morris. On the receiving front, 12-11 and 11 for DeAndre Hopkins. Very close to having, really, 4,000-yard receivers on the year defensively london fletcher ageless wonder 125 tackles we got a big 20 bomb plus 20 tfls from brian arakpo nine and a half sacks ryan kerrigan five picks d'angelo hall leading the team for the yearly awards mvp went to josh freeman rg3 coming in at number four and just looking for our team he is quarterback of the year in the nfc goes to rg3 uh, arakpo is a d lineman of the year uh, the like I say, no, no X factor for RG3 based off of those stats. He, hell of a year, though. Hell of a year. And we could be looking a lot worse going into year four than what we are right now. And the retro rebuild free agency frustrations continue across any team. I, again, just coming in at least 10 points higher than the second best team for Marcus Cannon. He is a 86 superstar right tackle. And just, that's unbelievable. This draft couldn't have gone any better. First round, I needed the best strong safety and or free safety available. Top strong safety was Landon Collins. Second round, top free safety was Adrian Amos. 73 hidden dev there for Landon Collins. A little bit more work to do on Amos. 68 It's not a great starting rating, but he does have the hidden dev trade. He's going to start right away. Uh, we got uh, Jake Ryan, you know, 66. Feliciano on the O-line. Uzuma with a pretty low rating. Heineke. For our backup quarterback, and I got Raheem Mostert. No depth or anything crazy, but a great change of pace type back to uh, pair with uh, Alfred Morris. Extension time for our G3. Able to lock him in seven years, 266 million bucks. God damn. Year four, we win the NFC East with a 12 and 5 record, our third NFC championship in four seasons. However, in the playoffs, not even the second place team in the division. Philly was third in our division, coming in as a seven seed. And it wasn't even close. 24 to 10. The superior Philadelphia Eagles able to uh, kind of knock us on our ass here this season. I thought I thought we had a pretty strong year, all things considered. I don't think at any point that I was like kind of stopping and doing stuff. We weren't first place in the division. RG3, not a hot year. I mean, you know, if you're going to do that kind of stat line, at least the interceptions are low. 13 and 18 for Alfred Morris. We got 11 and 6 Fred Davis. So just our passing offense was was pretty bad. I also had to use like Raheem Mostert in the slot. So like we desperately are lacking uh, one more receiver. So maybe I don't know that had something to do with RG3's down year. 13 and a half sacks for Rackpo. 11 from Kerrigan. Very good. 
Yearly awards MVP went to Russell Wilson. And for our beloved, oh man, Trent Williams, alignment of the year. Kudos to him. Everybody else, step it up. I need to see better year five coming up. Holy shit, we signed a free agent. Welcome to Washington. 85 overall, right tackle, James Carpenter. We'll say right now, in the first round, because we went DeAndre Hopkins last time, we had an opportunity to get a big player. Clearly, you know, Xavier Howard's got to have a higher rating than James Bradbury. James Bradbury's still a good player. I'm not going to, you know, he's currently a Philadelphia Eagle. But, you know, Xavier Howard, clearly the better of the two picks. Nine times out of ten people will make that pick. So we'll just, because of the DeAndre Hopkins early, to keep the balance of not just S-tier drafting. We'll get James Bradbury in hell. He's going to still be a fine corner with the hidden dev. Draft recap after the Bradbury pick. I want Joe Schober in the second round. More so, you know, thinking life beyond London Fletcher. Could retire at any moment. And he, he pulled in a dev trade. So that was a really good second round pick. We got uh, Sayamalu <laughs> bust Austin Johnson. Uh, Demarcus Robinson, 67. Got Jakeem Grant. So we got a lot of speed there. Wide receiver uh, and a depth guard there. But, uh, you know, pretty solid draft class here for us to build on. And, you know, get that Super Bowl next year. Year 5 comes to a close. We continue our dominance in the NFC East, getting our third straight NFC East title. But unfortunately, man, the playoff success outside of that third season, our Madden 15 year, um, you know, we're now here in Madden 17, and, you know, we're one and done. We're like, you know, we, we've been struggling. This is not where a team of this quality, you know, should be stuttering. You know, we should be able to go deeper. I mean, look at the team we got right now. We got RG3's 99, Robert Morris 85, 97, X-Factor for Hopkins. You got Pierre Garçon, Fred Davis, Carpenter, Zach Martin, Trent Williams. You know, the, the old line's not complete, but overall it's still a very good offensive line. Defensively, you got Kerrigan. We got Rackpo. London Fletcher's like 50 years old, still playing at a high level. 42, that's like the oldest player I've seen. Perry Riley, 92. We got Landon Collins, Amos, Hall, Bradbury. Cooper just went up a freaking dev trade. You know. Too good to be one and done. As frequently as we have been. Draft recap. So, uh, this is just a BPA type draft, honestly. Uh, it actually ends up being a pretty stacked draft class, all things considered. Uh, so, I really, in the first round, I was kind of hoping I would be able to get Jonathan Allen. Like the Washington team did in the 2017 draft. But he went... And I was just like, you know what? I, you know, our, our best years with RG3 was when we had the combo of Roy Hillou and Alfred Morris. We had that two running back tandem. So Dalvin Cook was the top player on our board. I, I felt like just, you know, had to take that uh, gamble there. Second round, we got Larry Gonjobi, 68. He's only there with a normal that we needed to actually hit on a D tackle, which is unfortunate. They come around the third round. Top wide receiver on the board was Chris Godwin. And, you know, we're still looking for that third wide receiver. And Pierre Garcia is starting to get up there in age a little bit. So uh, Godwin absolutely could fill the role of a developing wide receiver too long-term along with DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, we got Weiss, Molly Cox, Nicholas Morrow, and Chuck Clark. The computer made those last two picks. And hell of a picks, to be completely honest with you. But Dalva Cook, Chris Godwin in the same draft, that's a hell of a haul. And as year six comes to a close, six of nine total that we are going. We won another NFC East title. 98 had the tiebreaker over the Dallas Cowboys. Went to the playoffs. Got a victory before our momentum was abruptly halted against the Rams, unfortunately. But at least we got a little bit of momentum. Wasn't one and done. You know, we're getting there. I think we stack another good draft or two. That will be enough to put this team. I'm, I'm confident. We only got, what, three years left after this? We're going to get a Super Bowl. RG3, huge, 4,400 yards, 36 touchdowns. We had 15, uh, 11 and 15 there from Alfred Morris. Just not getting anything to Dalvin Cook, but that's only a matter of time. What's this dev? We see his dev is the X Factor? No, it would show. It's not even a superstar? Okay, he is. All right. Um, 3,000 yard receivers Garcon, DeAndre Hopkins, and the rookie Chris Godwin. Defensively, Riley, pretty good. A lot of tackles, a bunch of TFLs. Kerrigan, a rack poke. Terrific one two punch as pass rush specialist, but you know, one playoff win's not good. We need three, maybe even four. At least we're at a point in the rebuild now where we can actually sign free agents. We get a massive get here at D-Tackle, getting Marcel Darius on a four-year deal, 91 superstar. Then DJ Fluker at right tackle, will kick him actually over into guard, which is where he predominantly played in the NFL, and he's an 82 superstar. Two massive gets, one on offense, one on defense. Now let's go crush the draft.
Take a look at the draft. Now, this is the draft that the ratings are going to change just a little bit because everything's just kind of off by one, but we'll fix it. We've got Dante Jackson. He's going to be our slot corner. Uh, so, again, the rating could shift actually kind of considerably for some of these guys. So, more so, just look. We get the hidden dev in Dante Jackson. Had to in the second round. Mark Andrews was the top tight end available. And uh, Fred Davis is regressing pretty bad, like two, three points every offseason now. So, we had to think about a new tight end, and that was just absolutely perfect scenario. Uh, Will Richardson, Kaiser White, Jamarco Jones, Kiki Kute, and Luke Falk finish out the draft. But Jackson and Andrews, two outstanding gets for the Commanders. Year seven, we get a tie. So that means things went well, clearly. If you get a tie, that means things are going incredibly well. We made the playoffs first round. We were able to beat Cam Newton, the Carolina Panthers. And then, unfortunately, a slim loss to the uh, Green Bay Packers. In the divisional round. So I'm starting to worry. RG3, great quarterback. Great career redemption to this point from a statistical standpoint. But I don't know if he's I don't know if he got it to uh to win the big one. We got two years left. I mean, this was a great year. He's now he, really outside of one year, I think. He's kind of been steadily one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, Dalvin Cook took a big step up this year. London Fletcher, 21 years in the league, still a tackle machine. 13 sacks, Kerrigan, 12 from Iraq Poe. Three picks, James Bradbury, but time's running out, man. We got two years, and I know that the rebuilds tend to get pretty good when it's an all-or-nothing scenario, but we're, I mean, we're due for an absolute stinker. We just can't do anything in terms of winning the Super Bowl. Two years left. Let's go, RG3. I'm just going to go with one cheesy pick this draft. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make any. Usually, I make a couple picks. I'm going to make Scary Terry, let the computer make the rest. Had to Just had to make that happen. Had to make that hole, bringing Scary Terry to watch. Like, what if, man? What if Scary Terry had this never injured, properly developed RG3? What could have been for the Commanders? So our draft recap. After the selection of Scary Terry 76 with the Hidden Dev. Uh, computer guys, Tristan Hill 72. We had Damian Harris, Osane Ziminez, Darius Slayton. Not a bad draft, all things considered. Jared Stidham, who tore up the first preseason game for the Raiders. I will bring it here live because we are in the championship game against the 15 and 2 Atlanta Falcons. Don't let the record fool you. Look at the better team is. We're at 93 overall freaking juggernaut. Uh, the reason why I bring it to live because this is the second to last year of the rebuild. If we do make the Super Bowl, I'm gonna risk hopping in and just watching it, sitting front row and seeing uh, if we can if we can you know super sim it. If we crash it, so be it. Hopefully we win. Uh, RG3 was actually okay, only okay this year. Uh, our run game was on point. DeAndre Hopkins over 1,000 receiving yards defensively. How is London Fletcher still doing this? 21 and a half sacks Ryan Kerrigan. 13 for Marcel Darius. 12 and a half for Brian Orakpo. London Fletcher, who is 44? Just, I mean, give him the MVP, honestly. Like, all things considered. Uh, Ryan Kerrigan is Defensive Player of the Year, which is pretty cool, as well as D Lyman of the Year. But all that matters is can we beat... A team that's actually very close to Kyle, uh, Kyle Shanahan, the Atlanta Falcons, and make the Super Bowl. I mean, if it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's a one-score game. Now everything just kind of falls on... Uh, let, let me also see, just because he might retire here, how old London Fletcher is. That's what I care about more about this loss. That's how we're going to cope with this loss. Let's just look how old this guy is. You know, ageism on full display. But, I mean, now this is setting itself up for, you know, Super Bowl or bus time. One more year for... Come on, one more year, London. Come back for 46. For the final draft of the rebuild. Holy, what happened? I made the first pick. I got Ruiz because I needed a new center. And I'll just slide him in the center. Hidden Dev, 69 overall. And then I just simmed it out. We got Josiah DeGuara, Stanley Thomas Oliver. Fourth round, we got Brandon Ayuk. Somehow, fifth round, we got Michael Owenu, which is, uh, you know, that's you know a fair pick. He went mid-round anyway. 74 with that hidden dev. Good God, what's Ayuk doing in the fourth round? I mean, he's not going to make him that much. I don't even think he's going to play. He's going to be a wide receiver four, but that's a, that's a weird draft happening. So here we go. This is the final chance for this rebuild. O-line outstanding. We got Mark Andrews, 79. We got Godwin, 85 star. Scary Terry. 99 X Factor Hopkins, Dalvin Cook up to a 91. Defensively, I mean, everyone got a dev here on the D line. 99 Kerrigan, 97 Arakpo, 40, 
Five year old Landon Fletcher still doing the damn thing. Old man got it. Perry Riley's developed nicely. Landon Collins is a 94. Amos 87. Secondary is not S tier, at least in terms of corners, but like the corners and safeties combined look pretty good. And obviously, the man of the hour under center, 99 overall, RG3. He's 30 now. That's that old man veteran, whatever, je ne sais quoi. He needs to have that now. He's, he's gone from being the electrifying playmaker trying to win MVPs. Now it is time to be a veteran. Guide your team to postseason success. It is the final year of the rebuild. It is our final opportunity to try to win a Super Bowl. Let's go. And we didn't. We didn't. We didn't even make the playoffs. You know, we've been um, we've been very lucky, I think, in the Retro Rebuilds. Generally speaking, they've almost all had happy endings. But maybe a team, you know, I, I wouldn't put it past the fact that, like, this game probably is just like, hey, you know what? Commanders can't win. As long as Dan Snyder's an owner, there's something in the Madden algorithm that's like, you know what? This team here, just quite simply, we're never going to let them win. We're going to punish any fan of this team by them never being able to straight sim win anything in this freaking game because this team's s tier this team is without a shadow of it, i think at this point what are we 92 93 this is the best team in the nfl best team in the nfl and then for some reason 21 ranked passing yards per game 23 ranked defense even though our defense is a night only thing that makes sense is, uh, you know, they're just, there's something uh, under the hood here. That's just the commanders, whatever you want to call them, are just, they're never going to amount to anything. So we got nine years in with RG3. I think all, I mean, from the, from the standpoint of rebuilding, reviving the career of RG3, mission accomplished. Through nine seasons, 38,000 passing yards, 283 passing touchdowns, 75 picks. Also got 2K on the ground, 14 touchdowns, and that's that's very good considering how bad scrambling quarterbacks are in the sim if you're not using one of the two playbooks that actually have you know consistent numbers in uh, Arizona and the uh, Baltimore Ravens. But I think all said, I mean, that's a, that's a pace there. If RG3 plays another five, six years, you know, Hall of Fame numbers, man. Like The pace has been set. It's been established. Obviously, having injuries off in the case of RG3 is very important. There is an asterisk next to it. But uh, I had fun. This is something I want to do. I have a couple things, a couple video ideas left on the checklist here. We probably have, you know, a week left of Madden 22 content, give or take. And, and there is a couple videos I definitely want to get into. And this was one that I, that I wanted to get done. So I hope you guys did enjoy this. Uh, and I don't know what's going to be next. Might be the Philadelphia Eagles Retro Rebuild. I might get that one out of the way, and then we can kind of, I don't know, do something else until uh, Madden 23 drops when it's coming to the 20th or something like that. But, uh, I, again, to wrap this one up, I very much appreciate you guys' love and support on this content, the retro content that we did to kind of close out the Madden 22 season. Uh, it's been absolutely awesome. So thank you guys very much. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed, and comment. What team? If you want to squeeze in one more team that's not the Eagles for the Retro Rebuild, make your voices known in the comment section below. It's not only great for the YouTube algorithm and help my channel out, let me know. Give me guys valuable feedback. So, uh, that's it. Worst outro of all time. Peace out. I love you.